Hello there, I'm Linda D. Marlor with Taxmasters Inc. in Rockville, Maryland. Today we're going to talk about all the new laws and some of the old laws concerning buying and selling your home or your clients' homes. One of the most frequent questions I receive is how to avoid paying taxes on the sale of a personal residence. Yes, there's exclusions, there's some laws that have been changed, and there's some good laws that will help you. In order to qualify for the exclusion, not only do you have to live in the house two out of the previous five years, and that could be any two years. It could be two years out of two. It doesn't have to be two years out of five. And also it depends on your marital status. So if you're single, you'll get a $250,000 exclusion from tax. And if you're married, you get $500,000. Now getting back to the two year exclusion, you can live in the house for two years, sell it, take your exclusion, and if you like, you can buy a new house, live in it for another two years, and also take your exclusion. You're allowed to take this exclusion every two years on any home that you've occupied. I think it's a wonderful law, much better than the old one. Frequently I'm asked if you have to report the sale of your personal residence on your tax return, and the answer 90% of the time is absolutely not. There's actually no form on which to put it if you don't have a gain. So the rule is that if you haven't rented the property out and if you don't exceed the $250,000 or $500,000 exclusion, then you absolutely do not have to report the gain anywhere. Now, if by any chance the lawyer who handles the settlement mails to you a Form 1099-S, which shows the sale as being taxable, then of course you'll need to report it on a Schedule D to prove to them that it's not taxable, and by them I mean the Internal Revenue Service. But to answer the question considerably, do not put it on your tax return if there is no tax to pay. And please don't be one of those people who says, maybe I should save and use my exclusion only when I need it. Let me tell you something. You're entitled to use that exclusion every two years, no matter what. Do not save it, because it's not like it's going to expire unless, of course, they change the law. So every two years, if you've lived in the house and you've owned it, please take your exclusion. Never forego an exclusion in lieu of paying taxes. Why would anybody want to do that? If you think about it, call me and I'll talk you out of it. You know, I'm in the Rockville, Maryland area and we deal with a lot of clients who are moving from Bethesda, DC and Virginia. And quite often they always ask us, how long does it take to establish residency in my new home? And then how long before I can take the exclusion? Well, again, we go back to the two out of five years. So if you're living in Maryland and now you've bought a new home, whether it's in Maryland, DC, Virginia, or anywhere, it could be in Hong Kong. As long as you live in that new home, let's see, do we remember? It's 24 out of 60 months or two out of five years, you can qualify. So you could move, spend two years, sell your house, take the exclusion, and again, you can do this every two years the rest of your life, unless they change the law, which means you better listen to this show when I do it next year in case there's a new law to explain. As realtors, you're often dealing with elderly folks or an elderly person who's selling a home, and quite often they don't have all the records they're gonna to need to compute their gain. What happens very often is the husband will pass away, let's say his name is Fred, and you're have, you have Mary who's your client and you're selling the house for Mary and she's gonna to need to compute the gain on her house. And there's been lots of improvements that have been made over the 30 or 40 years they've lived in it. But Fred's the one who kept all the records and sometimes made all the improvements, but Fred's dead. So you can help your client enormously if you can advise them to seek professional help, especially from an accountant who's familiar with real estate law, because they're going to need to reconstruct the basis of the property in order to avoid any taxable gain and also to help the client through the tax filing process. I hope you found all of this information useful and if you would like further information, please you can visit our website, tax-masters.com. There's a section there on getting organized and there's lots of forms there that you can download which will help you. Thank you so much for watching.